students a very warm welcome to you and i hope this is going to be a really interactive session so i hope hordes of you are there and um, i'm andrew segal gupta i teach at igno and uh, today we are going to discuss uh, ct 3 4 and 5 specifically reading comprehension and i have with me shifali ray and uh, she she was a lecturer at sert now she's a freelance teacher trainer has done loads and loads of workshops on teacher uh, with with teachers and has written lots of materials for school children as well so we are really fortunate shifali to have you with us thank and you. thank you so much for coming uh, to talk to our teachers thank you anju thank you for calling me okay so shifali let's begin right at the beginning uh, when do you think what do you think is the right age for children to begin reading see children uh, what we call is reading basically reading is looking at the marks some letters and be able to understand the meaning yes. and reading begins very early in life when children start recognizing things that they like mm-hmm. for example a child would recognize a cold drink by the, its name and would not know this is uh, the letters like c o k e but would know that that is the drink that the child wants actually that's right mm. uh, shifali mm. because i remember that uh, you know when i have these young nieces and nephews who can't read but they can see the m of mcdonald and they that's say oh right. that's mcdonald that's right you know so uh, there are many words like that which are in the child's environment mm-hmm. which child learns to recognize and the child remembers it because there's a meaning behind it mm-hmm. and if it is a meaning something that the child likes the child remembers it mm-hmm. and so we can begin when the child is at 3 or 4 years of age the child can listen to a word mm-hmm. and understand it okay so the moment the child understands a word is basically the sound yeah. is the sound of mother milk cat and the child knows that this is the sound the when the child hears a word cat the child maybe visualizes a cat Mm-hmm. so the best way is to introduce the child to the word now which stands for cat and then when the child hears the word cat when l- looking at the cat not not as a broken cat mm-hmm. but as cat the child learns to recognize that conglomeration of letters as cat okay you so know, as a whole the child learns to read as a whole okay so you you're suggesting a look and say method ha mm-hmm. look and listen look and repeat and say method and soon children recognize words as a whole and, and l- yeah yes. later later a little later when they learn the alphabet because they need to learn the alphabet to write as well mm-hmm. then they learn to you know find patterns wherever there is a c it might be s it might be k wherever there is an l kind of a shape a hook it mm-hmm. means l and that is where they now understand the l- words and also can you know interpret it that it is a collection of some symbols you mm-hmm. know that's and then we proceed with the reading and the child then learns to read the word and then later spell it up also okay yeah all right so but why do we need to read shifali why do, what is the reason for reading and let's go to the slide in fact i have a slide prepared see we need to read for various purposes mm mm-hmm. well i think i can think of three very major purposes are huh? we uh, read to study mm-hmm. to learn mm-hmm. we need we read to survive okay. i need to do read a lot of things in order to survive i need to read letters and notices and memorandums mm-hmm. and bus time tables bus uh, timings to survive for my day to day life in other words mm. in fact i can't seem to get to the slide mm. uh we want information for some purpose we need to read for yeah. that yes we need um, instructions to perform yes yes some tasks tasks right 
Like and it could be a game. Mm -hmm. It could be instructions. I bought a new machine mm -hmm. and I don't know how to run it. It looks very complicated to me. Mm -hmm. So what I need to do is I need to read that and then follow step by step so that I don't spoil my machine. So we need to read instructions for various work. Even I need to read the instructions given on the medicine bottles. Absolutely. And the absolutely, dosage. You absolutely, see? absolutely. So we need that for survival. Basically yeah. not getting into problems. Yes. And then, of course, we read for pleasure. Yes, we read for pleasure. We, read we want to read stories. Yes, we read to keep in touch, right? Letters, yes, yes, emails. Yes, you know? we need to because uh, there are many things we cannot. Many times, people are far away. But of course, today the telephone has very much uh, is become very efficient. But then there are various things that we send to each other, which need to be recorded for future. Mm -hmm. We need to be stored for future. So we send emails, we send letters, we send SMSs. Yes, we need to be in touch. Yeah. And then uh, we need also to read notices, posters, mm. advertisements to know what's happening where. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, I need to be informed about I want to know where this exhibition is mm. or where a play is happening. So we need to read that as well. And of course, I must tell you, we need to read warnings because I must be careful, you know, not to get into danger. So there are plenty of warnings written in various places. Yeah. So I need to read even, even warnings. Uh-huh. Yes, true. And, and we also, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we, yeah, our, I just uh, forget. We need to read a lot of lists. Absolutely, yes. You know, we need to read a lot of inventories, a list. Mm -hmm. And there we are not reading from left to right. Mm -hmm. We are reading from top to bottom. True, mm -hmm. true. So then, You were saying something, actually. Yeah, I was uh, also sort of going on to the next thing that I wanted to talk about, which was uh, how do we read? What is the process of reading? You know, how do we manage to uh, read? Uh, see, uh, well, uh, we how do uh, we need to? Well, at a very very basic and a very very raw level, we can say when read is when we look at the letters, look at a word written in a certain language, mm -hmm. whether it is English or any other language. Mm -hmm. I need to look at it and know and understand what it means. Yes, you yes. know, reading. Uh, well, there are cases where children learn the alphabet. They learn the sounds that they stand for, and the, and the sound they generally are used for. And there have been occasions during our tenure you know, t training and when we visited some of the schools where, you know, um, we found that the children were reading aloud, so to say. Mm -hmm. They were mouthing the words, mm -hmm. but they did not know what they meant. So what happened? It was a real reading. Was it a monotone? Because uh, in a monotonous fashion. Mm -hmm. So reading is, you know, linked with understanding. When so, I say I can read something, it means I understand. Mm -hmm. Let me give an example, Anju. Yeah. Uh, I have friends who live in Meghalaya, in Shillong. Mm -hmm. And they can't see the script. They, uh, they don't really have a script of their own, so mm -hmm. they use a Roman script. Mm -hmm. So there were plenty of things written on the roadside. There were many of instructions and names of the roads and boards. But I could, maybe I could mouth it and convert them into sounds, but I did not know what they meant. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, then I could not say, I can't say I, read, I could read Kasi just because I could say that a word meant Sanke. Hmm. Sanke, I don't know what it means, but later I learned Sanke means to nurture something, to make it grow. Yeah. So, unless I understand what it means, it's not reading. So, so that's very, very basic to reading. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, we have this uh, slide which I hope we can get to. Yeah. Where we, hmm. we can ask the teachers about the reading process. Okay, so let's get to the slide. Can we get to the slide, please? Yes. So uh, mm -hmm. let's ask the question, uh, these questions uh, or these statements, uh, whether they are right or wrong, mm -hmm. to the teachers who are listening into the program. So, uh, uh, Shifali, should I read and then maybe you yes. get the answer? Otherwise, you could comment. Mm -hmm. So, reading involves looking at a text and saying the words to yourself. Do you think uh, this is what uh, reading is all about? Well, what do the teachers think? It's yeah. important to say the words to yourself, which means you're mouthing the words, you're vocalizing. Is it necessary? Uh, I don't think that teacher, so let us then. And so I think, you know, uh, well, see, there is at a time when the child is very, at the time when the child is very young, mm -hmm. maybe the first two years of reading or the first even three years, you know, the child gets exposed to a lot of new vocabulary which may not be there in the environment. So mm -hmm. the child needs to know what the word sounds like. Mm -hmm. So there possibly the mouthing of by the teacher helps. Mm 
but then of course so this statement per se is not correct because we don't really read loudly we don't say the words to ourselves it's just the image of the word or the sound in our mind we read silently yeah in fact if you uh, lo- you know if you think of us reading the newspaper mm. in the morning mm. we do we read it aloud we read it silently so this is something that i know that you say in a lot of workshops and i do as well that re- the reading process is a silent process and actually reading aloud is a very different skill isn't it uh, shifali reading aloud is a different skill, skill mm. where the you mm. know where the news readers you know probably mm. read aloud actors and actresses yes. read aloud yes that is where you need to hone that skill it's only because if you are going to be a performer you're going to be a news reader or an actor otherwise if you need to read for information for entertainment or for even uh, for basic purposes in life i think one needs to read silently imagine how noisy the whole world would be if everybody started reading aloud Yes exactly <laughs> it would so be an uproar <laughs> it would it would be such a noisy world you're so very right and actually mm. this is a practice which you know uh, teachers insist on following but let, let let me you know say it once more that reading is a silent activity and when you when you say that okay how will they learn the pronunciation that's a different skill that is the skill of uh, speaking of teaching pronunciation which you have to do differently and have have to do it at another uh, in another sort of session not in the reading class reading class you know from the cl- from cl- class 4 onwards is a sort of mixed silent and reading aloud activity and by making the students sort of read aloud you are probably just uh, 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 creating discipline in the class but nothing more than that Uh, you know, is it yeah, I, I agree with you fully, Anju, and I would like to add something here. Like uh, sometimes teachers feel, no, we need to read aloud, and mm-hmm. the child has to read aloud. And mm-hmm. what happens? The child starts reading aloud. Now, where is the child concentrating? The child is concentrating Absolutely. on the pronunciation. Yes. Which means that the child who's reading is really not getting to the getting the meaning, unless it's a very very smart child who's good in English. Mm-hmm. Two. the child may s- mispronounce a word mm. and the teacher stops the child and corrects it yes. so what's happening the, ch- the teacher is even hampering the fluency of reading aloud which means there are breaks mm-hmm. now if there are breaks like this the reading process anyway the child is not learning to the child is getting discouraged so reading aloud often uh, is uh, works the other way it doesn't really works to the advantage of the reading class because the and another thing when we read of course we will be referring to this later and when people grow up and these small children grow up we when they read they will not be reading every word in Absolutely. the text that they look at yes. maybe they'll be uh, presuming a few things you know based on their knowledge of life based they'll predict a lot of things skip things but when you're reading aloud you are not skipping anything you are reading word by word which becomes to some extent a mechanical exercise or perhaps you are also getting distracted by your own voice absolutely and that you don't understand the meaning and the others also get distracted because if yes. you're mispronouncing the others are sort of waiting for that uh, you know mispronunciation to happen if they know that you're a habitual uh, oh no yeah that it is in the you, class yeah. yes yes so yes. all that so mm. avoid teachers mm. avoid any reading aloud activity and then okay. go to so the next so should we go one. to the next yeah. one yeah yeah Uh, can we have the slide please yeah so reading involves putting the words in print on the page into sentences and making sense of them so what do you think of this shifali well what do the teachers think i think let's not okay uh, uh, right now let's look see uh, we, uh, we are looking at letters in clusters which are words then we're looking at words which are arranged in a certain manner to make sentences mm-hmm. now when we are reading we do not read every word individually in fact the eye doesn't focus on a single word Absolutely. individually we read in a chunk you know and which means that if i am a good reader then i will not be reading it word by word like if i were to read this mentally based i would not be reading it as reading involves putting the words in print i would not be doing that i would rather reading involves putting the words in print will come together mm. so we do put uh, them into sentences and make sense of them true let's get on to the third point to understand a word you have to read all the letters in it 
to understand a sentence you have to read all the words in it what do you think well i don't agree with this mm -hmm. and uh, i had uh, a very interesting email sent to me by a friend once mm -hmm. whose uh, i mean that email has been going around the common forwards and it's uh, it shows it's a, pa a passage where it's the first two letters or the first letter and the last letter are correct in the and uh, there are many words where the, the the letters in the middle are all all mixed up and can you understand? and we could still understand because oh. we could still understand what it meant because we read look at the word as a word as a whole then we don't only use visual clue we use a lot of contextual clues to understand mm -hmm. and if i if a doctor were to read something and is reading about bandages mm -hmm. and reads a letter begins with st mm -hmm. so we know bandage needs to be sterile mm -hmm. so okay. it could not be steep it should not be steely yeah you know yeah. Uh, so there there's a lot of prediction happening so yes. we don't really look at every letter we look at every the word as a whole and sometimes we don't even look at the word we look at the complete phrase yeah we look at phrases actually phrases actually, actually which yeah. is why it is not always very good very good idea to teach very young children to always spell out the words that they read yes. let them read the words as a whole because then they get the meaning and then sentences as a whole then sentences, sentences as a whole you know okay at the natural speed yeah yes all right uh, can we have the slide so we can go on to the next point yeah yeah to understand a text you need to know the meaning of all the words in the text what do you think ah uh, well mm, uh, there's a i mean your the ct material also has this phrase mm -hmm. that reading is not an all or nothing process mm -hmm. that's not true because we don't need to understand every word of what we read and we often do not understand i mean we read the newspaper yeah. do we understand every word in it but no. we get the common gist of this and which is good enough for our purpose we do not need to understand every word or what we read as long as we get the main gist as long as we get the main points as long as we get the main idea the intention of the author the writer why the person wrote it the tone what is it aiming at hmm. that's good enough i mean they may and uh, well uh, anju sure you'd all agree you'll also agree and my friends would agree there that even new words when they occur often we can guess the meaning from the context True. we are looking at a large context and trying to you know get meanings or trying to approximate meanings you know mm -hmm. of the new words and we do not need to understand every word which means friends that when we are teaching in the class when we ask questions we should not aim at total comprehension Mm -hmm. nobody can have total comprehension and this is one thing very important because and it's not uh, you know i have seen textbooks of children uh, where i have found that the teacher has tried to explain every word and there is a constant uh, you know one parallel one line on english the text and pencil markings with meanings over every word written which runs alongside or on top of the line which is not really required we must encourage children to read and understand the main idea the gist and if of course there are new words which really are bothering them they we could discuss them look at the contextual clue or they could look at the dictionary so we don't really look at total comprehension so i won't agree with this uh, uh, this this statement, this statement right. yes then let's go on to the next statement let's go on to the next statement the teacher can help the students to read a text by reading it aloud while they follow the text in their books i think you've in a sense answered it uh, do you think uh, you'd like to comment more on this yes uh, see there when we were talking of reading and mouthing the words we were reading for ourselves which means i am a student and i am reading aloud where we said no okay, that doesn't help much but uh, this kind of an activity is supposed to be a very good activity uh, as a listening exercise yes where you have the a listening activity where children just listen to the text and do the task uh, it is recommended often it is recommended by um, linguists and people that uh, 
after they have read understood the task understood the text and you know done some task again not aiming at total comprehension it's a good idea that they hear the text and as a look at it then they basically it helps them to see how the text is organized the listening text was organized how it has been formatted and maybe they understand it more it helps you know this yeah. kind of a thing helps where at the end of a listening activity yeah. where they are looking at the text so in a that sense, they're listening to what you're mm. trying to say is that listening and reading are also different activities and listening can be a sort of follow up after it the can be integrated the, yes a yes. follow up yes. or integrated with, with the reading read, act, reading and, activity uh -huh. and one more thing with very young children i think it helps mm -hmm. and uh, well i have been a teacher a school teacher myself and often when teaching poetry mm, we all yes, know yes. that a poem is something which you need to listen read aloud and enjoy yeah and the way you read a poem that's is a way you understand the meaning I because you know much of it is in the rhyme it's in the music it is in the play upon the words yeah. and with small children they like it when the teacher reads a lesson aloud they understand it better so i think with small children we can say that it could help to a large extent yes in fact uh, shifali this yeah. brings me to the next point of text type mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. sense that maybe with a play and a poem there could be some kind of reading aloud but yes. with an expository prose piece or scientific piece it's foolish to read aloud so the teacher has to be very clever yes Th this text is for mm. reading aloud and the other text is for reading silently yes. to be clever that a play and a poem always is read al aloud Loud, maybe yes. a story maybe a maybe story, a story, story as, well. as well yes yeah you okay. know you can get the emotions you can get the feelings through the intonation inflection of the reader yes. it's a good reader yeah but uh, a, mm, but a scientific mm, text or a uh, no, text on no, uh, no, no. uh, jog you know yes. sort of geography yes. text that needn't be read aloud that needn't be read aloud yeah. Yeah. and i've also found teachers very effectively using bits of a lesson which mm -hmm. has uh, like it's it's a story or a happening where there's a bit of a dialogue the mm -hmm. conversation in inverted commas yeah. so they read that aloud ask children to read that aloud now the objective of that is not really understanding the objective is that how do you speak those sentences in a context yes which means your intonation mm. your pronunciation your stress yeah they they then the objective of the teacher is not reading and if you are talking of comprehension then i think it's good that they listen to it and of course read much of it silently in fact you brought us to a very uh, interesting point that the teacher should be very clear about the objective of what she is doing yes yes you know because yes. uh, it should not be a haphazard okay i'm doing this part mm -hmm. and then the next part it should be very clearly the objective of this part is reading comprehension the objective of the other part is yes. uh, stress intonation pronunciation yes, yes. and so the teacher needs to be very clear on those points mm -hmm. let's get back to the slide and go on to the next point let's get back to the slide can we have the slide please okay uh, uh when we read for meaning we do not need to read every letter of every word nor every word in each sentence um what do you think i think we have uh, discussed this, this at length yes. uh, a so few so points we, we can uh, just let back uh, yes we don't really need to read every letter in a word because a good reader an efficient reader is a good predictor hmm. we so, often predict what's coming yes i read the first three letters i know what's a word i need the first three words i know what's a sentence same thing happens when listening mm -hmm. you see you listen to the intonation and um and the first few words and you know what's coming yes similarly coming. with reading so we don't really read and you will see notice that your eye also doesn't look at letters in isolation yes. the whole word you look at the whole word or not even the whole word you look at a phrase yeah. in fact the eye takes in chunks at a time not uh, and not in a fragmented manner fragmented into letters or words so and you know mm. in fact the eye goes back and forward you know it goes back yes. and forward when reading so it is definitely not even a linear or a you know process horizontal process where we sort of read mm, one one mm, word mm, or, mm, uh, mm. after the other we just go backward and forward while we are reading and let's go to the slide yeah. the and uh, let's go to the slide yes there are no major differences between how one reads 
in one's mother tongue and how one's read uh, how one reads in a second or foreign language do you agree with this uh, shafali uh, uh well if we were to compare languages like maybe hindi bangla or maybe other indian languages where you have the matra mm -hmm. you have the choti u you have the badi u you have the o you have the o there i think at some time child needs to look at the text more closely mm -hmm. you know often it happens that it's a quick reading you might read a word uh, wrongly and the whole meaning changes mm -hmm. so at a junior level perhaps yes one needs to look at it but when uh, the children are you know somewhat fairly proficient with the language i really don't think it matters uh, is any difference between reading uh, 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 your mother tongue or english or two languages because yes. again you are doing the same thing you are predicting mm -hmm. you are assuming and you are using largely the contextual clue Yeah. So uh, when you are the with little proficiency in the language I think these things cease to matter. Yeah and uh, just to give some information to our teachers uh, this is not in the CT course mm -hmm. but I'll just give mm -hmm. some information mm -hmm. they say that uh, there is a difference between what they call uh, you know sort of social skills mm -hmm. and uh, academic skills and uh, it seems social skills have to be learned in each language that means cultural mm -hmm. uh, the way to mm -hmm. how we greet in each language mm -hmm. uh, the social norms of the language we have to le uh, learn in each language for instance there is a certain politeness etiquette in english you know where are thank yous mm -hmm. and sorries mm -hmm. and excuse me mm -hmm. are part of uh, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. repertoire of english but where hindi is concerned we do not need that okay uh we do not say thank you in that uh, you know all the time dhanyawad is not really is there an is there a question sorry yeah let's have the question can we have the question no question so basically what yeah. we were talking yeah. about was the formulaic uh, sentences which children need to learn yeah, yeah. formulaic also a social a and cultural social. basically language is what a part of society and part of culture yes so learning of language is also learning part of the yeah. culture yeah and when i went to on to mm. talk about politeness as i mm. said there was a certain mm. uh, etiquette of politeness in mm. english which is which is not uh, uh, which would be uh, Uh, you know sort of false in uh, in hindi for instance if i kept saying dhanyawad to people and shukriya to people for uh, you know to my it, mother for instance uh, it would be if she gave me a glass of water or to my son it would be a little odd no nah, it's you these know, are all formal ho rahe ho you'll say yes. something like mm -hmm. yes let's have the question yes okay the, we are waiting for the question we're waiting with for the question wait a breath actually mm. so i hope we get the question and um, uh, uh, but academic skills are transferred from one language to the other that's yes. the point mm -hmm. that uh, you know so ac reading and writing are academic skills and these are always transferred from one language to the other yes there's a lot of transfer uh, while pronunciation mm -hmm. and uh, uh, such things stress intonation have to be learned in each language but mm -hmm. reading skills and writing skills can be transferred that's the point i wanted to make Uh, uh, yes basically we learn to use you know grammar basically the knowledge of grammar yes. there's a lot of transference uh, in from, grammar yes yes from one language to another one language other. to another okay so now i want to ask you about yeah. the uh, you know what are the characteristics of uh, reading okay so let's get on to the slide can i have the slide please uh, can i get the slide yes characteristics of reading so uh, okay i uh, students can have mm -hmm. a look at it and you mm -hmm. can also then talk about this mm -hmm. uh, what are the characteristics of can reading yes please let's hear the person good afternoon madam yes good afternoon 
Uh, I'm calling from Delhi. Yes. Madam, I had a doubt. Yes. While we are studying inside, we will st we will read very fast. But the same thing, of, suppose if I am studying outside, so my speed is coming down. What is the reason? Uh, the, uh, could you repeat your question, sir? Because we couldn't really understand. If suppose if I am reading uh, some newspaper or any yes. some material, yes. suppose if I am studying inside, mm -hmm. that uh, my speed will be very fast mm -hmm. comparatively when I am studying outside. What is the reason? Uh, in Re this case, I think, mm -hmm. uh, Shefali, uh, when mm -hmm. you are reading the newspaper, it is uh, it is fast because it is an activity which is, uh, you know, which is uh, when you are uh, in a sense at leisure you're easy in your home you're uh, relaxed and it is what we call extensive reading and you're skimming basically you yeah. would not be reading every word you're skimming yeah. you know and you understand you already know what's the background say the political news you already know what's the background and uh, you read further you have already got some background knowledge so you're reading faster so, but when you study, maybe you are doing a study and that study, as Anju very rightly said, that was extensive, this is intensive. In intensive, and we need to read carefully. And if we need to read carefully, we often, what will happen, like reading process, we are going to talk about that. Mm. I read, I don't understand, I read on, then maybe sometimes I go back and check. What was that last point? Oh, does it link? You know, then what happened, this slows down the reading process. And when we are reading intensely for information, for study purposes, so that we don't miss out anything, we do read slowly. And that is normal. That's, that is normal. That's normal. Yeah. Because a good reader, sir, is one who can vary his or her speed according to the text and according to the purpose. Absolutely. So this shouldn't worry you at all. What you're doing is absolutely right. You don't need to get worried on this, as Shafali says. So let's go back to the slide. And if you yeah. have more questions, please do ask. We're very happy to receive any questions. Can we go back to the slide? Yeah. So reading is purposeful. That, that uh, Shafali, would you like to comment on anything? Uh, yeah, we have already talked about it. Reading, see, we don't read for reading's sake. We never do. Hmm. You know, we read with a purpose, either to get information or to read instructions, or to or read even what to somebody for pleasure, even for, for pleasure, pleasure. Yeah. or what my mother has uh, written, my son has written, my friend has written. Uh, I read also maybe an advertisement to find out, uh, oh, what are they selling? Let's see. Oh, and what's the language they've used? How they are played with the language? So reading is purpose purposeful because there's reading always has a purpose behind it. So we don't read for reading's sake. We read because we want to do something with the text that we read, with the information that we get from reading. Yes, and reading mm. is also selective, right? Yeah. We don't read, even when we are studying, we do not, uh, we decide that this is important and this is yes. also important. Yes. So even while we are studying, actually, mm. Shifali, mm. if you go mm. back to the old days mm. when we used yes. to study, mm. we, there were certain things that we read more carefully than we read other things, right? Yes. So would you like and to comment? Yes, uh, and the newspaper. Yes. It's a, so much of text, yes. so much of news, yes. but we, do, we just don't read everything. We read what interests us or what we need to read. So we are selective in our reading. Mm -hmm. You know, even uh, similarly, we are selective in our reading even in one single article. Because I might uh, like to say, if I am fat, so I'm fat, maybe fat like me, so <laughs> I want to get thin, so I read an article. What happens is after I've read the main points of what I need to do and a person has then the other author has gone about to talk about other case histories or other information which I really don't I think ah, oh, I've got what I needed. So I don't really read even the article to an end. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And so we do read selectively. We, re read, we read selectively. selectively. And that's important in life. We need to learn to read selectively. In fact, these are the things we need to teach our children. Yes. That they also need to be mm. selective readers. So again, not every sentence, not every word is important in a text. Yes. Case, right? Even when we ask questions, it is not that we ask on every little bit of the text. Absolutely. You know, we have mm. to ask questions uh, also intelligently. Let's mm. go back to the slide. Can we have the slide back? Yeah. Uh, this, is, this answers again the, uh, the person's question. Yeah. Reading speed varies according to content and purpose. Yes. So here we have the point. The reading speed varies according to content and purpose. 
Now, content means what is it? Is it scientific content? Is it academic content? Then we read carefully and slowly. And purpose, if I'm reading for, see, uh, I have a novel. And many of our English teachers, we have done all done English literature. The same novel, if I'm reading for pleasure, I skip a few uh, things. I just read. I skim through. If I have know what the story is, I may be not even complete it. Um, uh, I read it very, very fast. But if it becomes a part of my study, where I think uh, the questions on character would be asked, then I will read a little more carefully. So it depends much upon the content. One, some things by their very nature, you know, they don't call for intensive reading, they don't call for you know, very careful reading. You need to just skim and uh, read quickly. But there are certain things which need to be read very carefully, so the content and the purpose. Similarly, now let's look, an, let's look at a newspaper item. A newspaper item, mm, anyone, anyone, just anyone would read it very quickly and with speed and just get the main idea of it, okay. But if the item is, the news item is about me, my institute, my party, my political party, and there are comments in it, mm. then I will read it very carefully Absolutely. because I want to know what's the information. I hope the information is all right. I hope there's nothing um, controversial that's mentioned there. So, you know, the same newspaper article, which for everybody else is for, uh, you know, skimming, becomes something yes. for reading carefully for me yeah it becomes a scanning exercise yes. so let's a scanning introduce. exercise yeah. for a journalist who has been told to improve or um, or to write better or for the editor maybe it is even more intensive reading because they're trying to look at expressions and the points in it and how they ought to have been expressed you see so the same thing may be read in a different manner with different styles at different speeds by different people Absolutely. so content and purpose. These two things are, are what govern the way we read. Okay. Let's go back to the slide. Yeah. We'll skip the next point, which is reading is uh, silent, and go on to the next. Reading is text-based. And what does that mean, uh, Shifali? Let's See, text-based is, uh, what is text? Text is, uh, a, a, are words and phrases. Text can be listening text, which you hear. Or text could be reading text which you read, yes. which basically mean the marks, uh, black marks on the paper, which are words, phrases, and sentences, and paragraphs, and whatnot. Now, the texts are of different kind, and you all know your different genres of writing. You have a poem, you have a play, you have articles, yeah. we have expository pieces, we have advertisements, yeah. and we have notices, we have lists, and whatnot. So reading depends upon what is the genre we are reading. What is it that we are reading? So if it's a short story, I read it quickly, I read it fast, I skim through. If it is an expository piece and I think I will be asked questions on it, I read it carefully. Yes. Okay. So let's go on to the next point, the next characteristics of reading. Yeah. Okay. Reading involves complex cognitive skills. And what does that mean? Okay. Uh, well, Anju, here we would like to look at the various levels of comprehension. Okay. Because what is comprehension? Comprehension is also basically a cognition. It's a part of cognition. Absolutely. If we do not understand, it's a brain that's happening. What is the brain doing? The brain is trying to interpret, interpret the marks and trying to find the meaning. We know that we uh, we have images stored in one part of the brain, and we read at the we read the text, and the left part of the brain, and the right part of the brain looks at the left part of the brain, seeks the images from the uh, right part of the brain. You know, all, all that kind of thing happens. But anyway, you know, the reading is basically a mental process, mm -hmm. and this understanding. Now, uh, I would like to mention the different levels of understanding. Yeah. One, you know, the basic level. Read what is written in black and white. I can make out what this word means in English. The factual what this level. The factual, factual level, level or the, the literal, literal level. Yeah. The literal level, the literal yeah. comprehension. Yeah. All right. That is very, very basic. And then the little more uh, complicated is now the inference. Yes. The inferential level. Yeah. Where I am now reading between the lines. Mm -hmm. Something is not written clearly but I know these other three sentences are pointing towards that yes and how do I do that 
I need to have my experience of life. I need to have some previous knowledge about things in order to infer. Yes. In other words, let's to, give them the technical term, yeah, the schema. The schema. Would you, would you just yeah, talk I'll, a little I'll bit on the schema. schema? You know, there is uh, what we call is a mental schema. Uh, one idea, other ideas associated with it and you have those then uh, those little rays going out then you have this part then again you have so the schema is like you know uh, you can have a web mm -hmm. as a web you can imagine a web chart now every one of us has a mental schema and you would be interested to know then if I were to talk of sports every one of us has a different mental schema for sports depending upon our aptitude our previous experiences in life Somebody would talk about the technical aspect. If I were a, co I were a yes. coach, somebody would talk about playing. The, the, or if I were a nutritionist and a doctor and a health freak, I would be talking of exercise it gives. Absolutely. And if I never liked playing, my mental schema will not contain any positive things about sports. Or if I have not been you know, treated nicely by my sports teacher when I was a child, my, the word sports will not conjure positive things. And what is most interesting is whatever we read further, you know, you know, it's something like particles, like atoms coming and sticking to each other. Similarly, whatever new ideas that we read, we come across, they come and attach themselves to a mental schema. And psychologists have also found that 10 people may read the same piece, but they will remember, retain different things. Yes. That also depends upon a mental schema. So we use a lot of our, of course we can change that, we can change attitudes, we can change our concepts, we can always learn new things and feel that we were biased, that is there. But the thing is we read and interpret most of the things according to our mental schema and for that we need background knowledge, experiences, our reading in life. Or our interaction with people, you know, our mental schema even grows when we talk to people yes. and get information. Even overhearing things, I learn many things and we attach us to a mental schema. And there's one more thing, yes, we were talking of levels of comprehension. So we talked of literal comprehension, basic. We talk of now inferential comprehension, which means interpretation. Then little above that, what Anjua would like to mention, uh, our critical. friend, is critical reading. Yes. Critical reading is not taking the written word for granted. Trying to look at it, is it all right? Does it say the right thing? Do you think it appears biased? Do you think the information is incomplete? No, I don't agree with this. All this is a part of critical reading yes. and we must encourage children to read critically through questions which ask them what would you think? Do you agree with this? Do you not agree with this? What thing? What do you think is missing? What more could the author have said here? So we do a lot of critical thinking. Again, we, we can't do critical thinking without information, without background knowledge and without our own experiences. And of course, we can say evaluative reading is where you say, you know, in a story we say, it, was it fair, was it not fair, was it right, yeah. was it not right, oh, yeah. it's so primitive, this idea, oh, this is so modern, oh, this is impossible. When we say this, this is a part of our evaluative and yeah. critical reading. Yeah. And I would like to say at the end, there's something called creative comprehension. The creative comprehension, you know, is very important. Whatever I learned from my reading, how do I use that in future in my life? Mm -hmm. yes. And with our children, how do they use it in writing? How do they use it in day-to-day -day life? How do they use it in speaking? So the four major levels of comprehension are literal, inferential, critical comprehension, and creative comprehension. Yeah. We'll just go on to the next characteristics as well because we have uh, very little time and yes. I think let's, uh, let's go back to the slide please. Can we have the slide? Uh, uh, we have, uh, yes, yes. About, we have talked mm -hmm. about the next one which is effective reading also involves chunking of information mm -hmm. and the last thing reading is based on comprehension. Would you like yeah. to just say a yeah, few words Yeah, I mean like in order to comprehend we use various strategies in fact we have been talking of comprehension uh, now. Uh, strategies like skimming, quickly uh, running, uh, reading through to get the main idea. Yes. You know you get the main idea. Scanning, I'm looking for a particular detail so I, uh, you know the eye runs over the page. 
we don't read everything and when we look at it i don't think we look at anything else they skimming there is scanning mm-hmm. a lot of it we do whenever we are reading and we use other clues for understanding as well we use our knowledge of the language is it an adjective is it a, a noun yeah. how is a sentence framed what be- does it mean yes and we use a lot of the contextual clues what is the situation what is happening what is being said that's how we try to understand what the text is offering to us yeah so thank you so much shifali it was a wonderful uh, thank discussion you. and uh, thank you very much for listening and thank you to the gentleman who asked the question